Squad's new infantry combat overhaul is going to completely change firefights. From brand new and immersive suppression mechanics, to realistic picture-in-picture -picture dual rendered optics, to even changing how weapons feel in your hands and how your character moves around, this new update will make the game one of, if not the most realistic tactical shooter in the market, and I'm happy to say that I was able to get early access to it all so I could share my thoughts with you guys. Not only was I able to try out every single American and Russian weapon on the training range, but I also played a round of squad as well. And I've got to say, I have some concerns going into this, but now I am absolutely sold. This is going to be amazing. But before we get into that, this video is brought to you by Manscaped. They sent me the performance package 4.0 the all-in-one men's grooming kit to take care of all your hair trimming needs. This is the Lawnmower 4.0. This trimmer can take care of hair all over your body, but especially for the bushwookies. You, you know what you're talking about, bushwookies, right? Yeah, you're bushwookies. It's even got a light for when you, you're lost down there, because I know some of you guys are probably lost down there. It's It happens, okay? This all-in-one trimmer works for your neck, face, body, hair, chest, armpits, doesn't matter, all the way down to your toes, so that way you can take care of all your grooming needs within the shower, no mess, no nicks on your face or all across your body, and you're good to go. Easy cleanup, really easy to use. Also included in the Performance Package 4.0 that I didn't realize I needed until I used it is the... <laughs> crop... <laughs> Technically, it says ball deodorant. It's ball deodorant. And not only that, you also have the Crop Reviver. This is toner. And because Manscaped's got you covered from head to toe, we also have the Weed Whacker 2.0 right for your nose hairs. And if you're like me and you got a giant schnoz, it has 45 minutes of runtime, so I think we're covered. But that's not all. For a limited time, when you purchase the Performance Package 4.0, you will get two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. These boxers are so damn good, it's literally all I'm wearing while I'm editing this video. Go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off plus free international shipping if you use promo code MOYDOG and click the link down in the description below. Thank you again, Manscaped, for sponsoring this video, and go take care of your balls, and now let's get on to some gaming. All right, so if you missed what the infantry combat overhaul is, I did release a video last week which went over the dev blog announcing these changes. So do check that video out if you want the full background. But essentially, Offworld Industries has not liked how the game has turned into a run and gun shooter. The current character movement, weapon handling, and gunplay just results in a game where you simply run, spawn, die, repeat. And because of that, the devs have scrapped everything. We now have new suppression mechanics, picture in picture scopes, and an overhauled combat system that is, well, to put it bluntly, it's amazing. So let's first go over all the new optics and weapons, and then I'll share my thoughts on how this felt during a live game of Squad. Obviously, the biggest change is the implementation of picture-in-picture -picture scopes. And on screen here, I've put the current Squad optics up against the test version I played with so you can tell just how different they are. When raising your weapon to aim down sights now, your character responds as if they are actually using both of their hands to use the rifle. Magnified optics are not instantly clear and lined up, and will take a second to give you a proper sight picture. And if you move around a little too much while ADSing, your vision will actually be blocked by the interior of the scope itself. This prevents unrealistic snappy movements and forces you to move a bit more deliberately. But once you are set, I was surprised at just how good the sight picture is. You're still able to have pretty accurate shots, but when you do fire your weapon, you'll notice a bit of screen shake and blur, obscuring your vision briefly before clearing up. And I did a bit of testing on the range and saw that running around and then swapping to ADS quickly was was incredibly jarring and took a few seconds for everything to settle. Your first couple shots will have significant weapon sway, and you can actually keep track of this with a new stability indicator down at the bottom of your screen, just above your compass. The closer these two white bars are to each other in the middle, the more stable your weapon is, and because of this, I found it best to ADS, give myself like a 1-2-3 count, and then start firing semi-auto a bit slower than I have in the past. Additionally, by holding down shift only when I wanted to actually fire the weapon, increased my accuracy significantly. I'm not gonna lie, it's very, very different than what we currently have in squad, but after a few minutes, I did feel pretty comfortable. The Russian 1P78 optic, I think, is a lot harder to use now, and previously, I had actually preferred it to the American ACOG, but due to everything just being a little more green now, I noticed it was harder to keep track of where I wanted to fire if I started firing a bit quicker, especially when going full auto. The 1P78 is the default optic for the automatic rifleman and machine gunner class 
classes in addition to riflemen and squad leaders. And when on the RPK, this new screen blur definitely turns this weapon into a more suppressing fire type instead of the long range fully automatic sniper it currently is in game. I'm a little torn on this one since I do think this will force players to treat these weapons a bit more like what their actual roles are in the real world. But when comparing the RPK to the PKP, which both use the 1P78, I feel like the PKP was in a much better spot. Either way, whether I was using these Russian weapons or the American SAR 240 Bravo, this overhaul will now reward players who use burst firing instead of full auto. The M145 optic for the Americans is now extremely clean, and the shorter burst fire can still give you pretty accurate shots. Going full auto now is really hard with the recoil changes, and as you can see, might be really good for suppression, but that's about it, especially at your really longer ranges. Now, is this a bad thing? Uh, I mean, I don't think so. I do think that if you're used to the long range sniping with these weapons, it is going to feel pretty bad to you, let's be honest you're not getting that clear sight picture anymore. But I do think this is healthier for the game in general since these things are honestly just full auto laser beams. Now you need to use them preferably in burst fire mode, which I think is more alike to how it should be used in the real world. With all these changes to the magnified optics, the biggest learning curve is actually going to be with the marksman kits. I wasn't able to check out the snipers like the Mosin Nagant or the Timberwolf since we just had access to the US Army in Russia, but ADSing with these new marksman rifles on the move will now be almost impossible. Marksmen I think have just had their skill ceiling increased and very few players will be able to accurately run and gun with these weapons. You will quickly lose your sight picture even by moving just a little bit and it will definitely encourage either bipodded use or crouched use. Ironically, I think this is going to help the player base in general because new players are probably going to see this and nope out immediately. This is very hard to use, it is not new player friendly at all, and even the 1P78 scope or the ACOG is going to feel much better than this. I'm not saying it's confirmed, but Marksman may no longer be the new player kit. However, these are all your magnified optics, but when looking at the reflex and hollow sights, they have also been changed a little bit as well, even though they don't have the dual rendering. I'm happy to say that the M68 red dot for the Americans and the 1P63 for the Russians are now completely viable. And it's not like they were absolutely horrible in the past, they just weren't that common. But now, if you're having trouble with the new picture-in-picture -picture optics, or maybe you're on a map that just has a lot of close quarters fighting, these sights will be much more effective. You will still see a little bit of the interior of the scope when you you move the weapon around, but it's not nearly as blurry and disorienting as the ACOGs. I tried playing around with the targets a bit and still found that that tap shift fire worked wonders for weapon stability, and you can really engage different targets fairly accurately. For those of us who have thousands of hours in game, it will take some getting used to, but I actually really like using these shorter range optics. I also think players who do like using the saw may even opt to use it with the M68 now since it is a much more forgiving sight when firing full auto and in burst. For the Russians, the 1P63 especially felt really good and it gives you a nice sight picture when compared to the 1P78. But the infantry combat overhaul doesn't just affect the weapon optics, and there are new weapon handling mechanics in the game as well. Currently, Squad has an accurate hip fire mechanic, where if you just start shooting while running, the game will just kind of randomly fire the weapon in the center of your screen. This makes for some easy hip fire and encourages players to run around while in close quarters. Now, however, Squad will use point firing, and bullets will actually travel wherever the barrel of your rifle is aiming. As you can see here, when I transition from running to standing, the first few rounds when I fire actually hit the dirt by my feet because that's where I'm aiming. This is awesome and after a few minutes of getting used to it, I felt like I could actually use my weapon fairly accurately without ADSing. And this is also going to nerf running and gunning with machine guns pretty heavily since the initial burst fire will dump shots into the dirt in front of you and then it'll just essentially start to lose control of your weapon as the recoil takes over. Additionally, there are new lean restrictions and you are actually prevented from leaning or I guess from doing a proper lean when holding these larger weapons like machine guns and anti-tank weapons. Now instead, it's incredibly minor but you do kind of like shrug to one side if you press Q Q and E while you're using these weapons, so peak firing with them is going to be a complete thing of the past. For anti-tank players, the new feel of these weapons will also take some time getting used to when trying to hit vehicles. You'll need to stabilize yourself a little bit more before firing or your longer range shots will be incredibly inaccurate. 
I do think weapons like the Carl Gustav or RPG-28 actually feel a little better to use now because they actually feel like the weapon has weight to them, but you can no longer quickly ADS and fire, which I guess is technically an indirect buff to vehicles. Personally, I think things like the AT-4 are a little too swayy. It just feels like I'm honestly on a boat rocking up and down for like way too long when just trying to use a standard AT-4 iron sight. But how do all these things come together in a real game? It's one thing to like it on the training range, but when you add enemy players and especially suppression, are these good changes? Well, I had the opportunity to play as the Russians and first picked up my standard rifleman kit with the AK-74M and 1P78 optic. The first thing I noticed right away is that players move far slower than what we're used to, but it's not sluggish. And if I did need to sprint, it did seem like I was getting there fast enough. The biggest shock was actually when I needed to stop moving in ADS. As I mentioned before, this initial sway, I guess you could call it when you bring your weapon up, is actually really hard to get used to in a live game, even though I felt comfortable with it in the training range. And simple shots that I could make in a normal game of squad were at times like laughably inaccurate. The first two or three seconds of ADSing are really, really tough to get used to. And since I'm used to aiming at the head for some one shot kills, I found myself missing quite a bit. I think aiming more center mass will be a bit more effective moving forward, but it's just a really hard habit to break. Longer range fights, I definitely felt more comfortable and tough shots that I could make in the past, like this nice headshot on a Matt V gunner, were still completely possible. The biggest thing was was being set and already ADSing before I needed to fire the weapon, which helped immensely. As the game went on, I was having issues with close range shots while using this optic, so I actually tried point firing a couple times with pretty good success. It feels much more accurate, or at least responsive, than hip firing, and after a few times doing it in game, I really prefer it than what we currently have with the hip fire mechanic in squad. However, as the game went on, I realized that I actually would probably do better with the shorter range optic and actually opted to use the 1P63. I felt much more comfortable pushing an area with this, and if I did have to pull up my sights in ADS, it felt a lot more natural. And this is about where I got my first taste of suppression. Suppression in squad will now give you various levels of what I would describe as like a Gaussian blur on your screen, but it actually doesn't blur your own rifle. And this gave me a really interesting sensation of being like super focused, I guess you could call it. Like I was intensely aware of my direct front and what I was doing with my own rifle, but everything around me just kind of lost focus and it was actually really unsettling to try and poke my head out or move. I was actually really impressed at how well this was done and there was a moment in game where a saw gunner had actually stopped our squad's flank due to this new suppression mechanic and every time that we would try to move or engage him one more person would go down. We were all kind of just stuck in his cone of suppression and in the past I would have simply popped up and tried to one tap him. I think everyone in this cone was trying to do that but it just couldn't work. The game had put myself in a situation where one I didn't have my preferred long range optics since I wasn't having good luck with it elsewhere around the map, and two, even just a few bursts of incoming fire would make it really difficult to fire back. It would have been better if we kind of backed up and tried to engage from a different direction, but we were all just kind of stuck and didn't really know what to do. Additionally, I did have the feeling that if the situation had happened in squad as it is currently, this entire firefight would have already been over since the saw gunner would have had laser accuracy and probably would have just killed all of us in one simple full auto trigger press. Instead, this entire engagement played out for like three or four minutes while we tried getting reinforcements until they brought up a Matt V. After that, with the 50 cal and some infantry that pushed us, it was over, and we might have lost the firefight, but this was like really fun. I actually enjoyed being in the moment and trying to fight against it, which was one of the main points that the devs brought up when trying to fix firefights. Now, after being suppressed for a bit myself, it made me realize how powerful its effect was on players, and I would find myself simply firing over the heads of where I felt the enemy was was in order to bound up and push areas. I know some people had joked about the line where the devs said they wanted to reward players for shooting at bushes, but it's no joke. If players are in and around those bushes, they are rendered useless if you start suppressing them, allowing others to flank around and take them out. It's incredibly effective and it's incredibly fun. Now, although I really enjoyed just about everything the infantry combat overhaul added, my main complaint is that the camera punch for stray bullets is like way too much. Here, I was simply running through a field and one round cracked over my head, which almost made it feel like my character did a full on lean. I personally preferred the black darkening of the screen, which we have in game now for these types of shots, and would hope that this kind of camera punch gets toned down quite a bit. 
Additionally, my second problem is that this initial ADS sway when you bring up your rifle and try to look through optics is just a little too much. I do think it's a bit too punishing, and although you shouldn't be able to have perfect aim right away, the current rock in the scopes just creates some ridiculous moments that makes you feel like your character has literally never held a weapon before. But in saying that, overall, I actually really enjoyed playing and ended up getting double digit downs as a rifleman, and since it was my first time ever experiencing these changes, I'd like to say I think I adjusted to them well, so if I can do it, y'all definitely can too. I do think there are areas that needs tweaking, and unfortunately I wasn't able to test all these weapons and in instances, like using machine machine guns myself, or maybe being suppressed by artillery or vehicles. But I do think this is a fantastic starting position, and if the devs have plenty of open playtest opportunities, I would strongly encourage everyone to download the squad playtesting branch, which you do get for free for owning squad, and keep an eye out on the official discord for sessions. All these changes may take some time for the devs to get them really dialed in, but man, I absolutely love the direction squad is going with these changes, and it may be an infantry player fun again. But what do you guys think? Is this a step in the right direction or are some of these changes a bit too heavy handed? Do you like the new long range scopes or maybe you're actually looking forward to using some of these shorter range optics instead? Let me know in the comments down below and if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. But that's it for me. Until next time, peace. Oh my God, what the hell is happening?